Do you guys know which skin color is the best? It's green! So I finished painting one of these uh, commission jobs I've had. It's a loon boss on a gigantic cave squig and I'm super happy with the result. I used one of the techniques that I uh, had in the water effect video, doing some drools on his tongue and it looks amazing. So you gotta check out that video if you haven't already. Also I've done some work with a contrast paint stormcast video that I've promised from before and I've done about half of the paint on the miniature and this video I think people will learn quite a lot from. But today we're doing something different. We're painting orc skin. And we're not just putting green paint on a miniature. Today I'm going to show you some tips and some tricks how professional miniature painters and professional painters add the highlights to miniatures and to muscles to give them volume. So this is no masterclass, but this is some quick tips on how to improve your painting skill for painting skin. Uh, before we start painting, if you want to support this channel, I just open up an Amazon affiliate account. And if you ever shop something on Amazon or if you ever want to buy something that I'm using and you live in the States, the UK, Germany or Canada, I put the Amazon affiliate links down below. If you just follow that link, it leads to some random product that I'm using. but Anything you shop within 30 minutes of clicking that link, I will be getting a kickback from. So it's a great way if you want to support me. It doesn't cost you any extra, but follow the link whenever you shop on Amazon and Amazon will be kicking back some money to me. So with that out of the way, let's start painting. As always, we start by priming the miniature with black and then spraying it with a white zenith spray from above. And when highlighting the skin, we're going to use planes of light and volumes. This means that when the light is hitting from above, all flat surfaces will be hit by light and also the highest point of all the raised parts will also be hit by light. So if we start with the abs, you will have a sharp edge on the upper part and it will gradually be shaded downwards. And the same goes for his chest muscles. We start bright at the top and then shade it downwards. Because this surface is more flat, the large area in the center will have a mid-tone. And then in the bottom of the chest we will have a hard shadow going underneath it. A beginner mistake a lot of people do, and this also applies to people using washes, is that you leave the brightest point the one that is most raised, instead of the part that is facing the light source. That way you will lose the light going in the center of his chest, and you will also have weird shadows on the top part of the muscles and the bottom part of the muscle. But today we're not going to do that mistake. We're going to give you well-defined muscles and we're going to give you a technique that you can use for any type of miniatures in any type of game. We start off with a base color of Rhinox Hide, 50-50 mix with Death World Forest. We add this to all of the orc skin as the base color. And just like with a face painting tutorial, we're assuming that his blood is red. So all the parts where the skin is thinner, we're going to add some red parts. I'm doing this by adding Bugman's Glow to his nipples and to his elbows. To get a smooth blend you can add the Bugman's Glow while the green paint is still wet. We're now going to start highlighting the skin. I'm starting with Elysian Green and then we're going to go even brighter with Moot Green. And as you see when I apply this, I start by going all the way into the edge of the muscle, on the top of it and on the inside of it because that is where the light would be reflecting. If you feel like you're not getting a smooth blend, don't worry too much about it because it's gonna look smoother once it's dried. And if it really doesn't work, just do a wet blend using the Elysian Green and then taking the original mid-tone. And if you're painting exactly this mini, you see that I add the first highlight to about two-thirds of the muscle. And then we do a 50-50 mix of Moot Green and Elysian Green and that is to about one third of the muscle on the upper part. And we're already starting to get some really well defined ab muscles here. Now we need to apply the exact same technique to the rest of the muscles on the miniature. And if you feel like you're not getting a smooth enough blend, just add more transitional layers when doing these highlights and shadows or do wet blends. So you add the highlights while the previous color is still a bit wet. And 
And with the chest, make sure that the whole flat surface has the medium highlight. I'm adding some Screaming Skull to the wet palette. This will later on be used to go even brighter with the highlights. Finally time for the next step of highlighting. I'm doing a 50-50 mix of Screaming Skull and Mood Green. On the chest muscles, I'm just doing a reflected highlight on the top part of the muscle. This reflected highlight is covering about one tenth of the chest muscle. I'm then stippling some even brighter highlights, kind of imitating where sweat drops would be reflecting light. Just look how quickly we reached a good result using this technique. We're not done, but you can already see how well defined the muscles are looking on this orc. And as I mentioned before, this technique can be used on all minis. Whether it's human muscles or elf muscles or dwarf muscles, this is a go-to technique. Now I'm just adding more of these highlights to the rest of the green skin. And to highlight the red skin parts, we're using Cadian Flesh and then going even brighter with Vallejo Pale Flesh. I start with the Cadian Flesh, adding this to the upper parts of the nipples, and then just drawing lines on the elbows, kind of imitating wrinkles. I then add some Pale Flesh to the upper parts of these wrinkles, and a tiny dot on the nipples. It's time to add some variational colors to the skin. We're adding Mephiston Red and Vallejo Hexed Lichen. I'm adding this red to some of the deeper shadows on the muscles. I do this to get some color variation. This also makes the green pop and stand out a bit more on the miniature. I also add some thinner lines of this to the elbows to kind of sell the effect of the elbow being thinner skin. I'm also adding some of this deep purple to some other selected shadow areas. I'm not adding a thick coat of this purple, it's more like a glaze thin shadow. Time to add some freckles. It's a 50-50 mix of dark sea blue and rhinox hide. And then I'm just adding circular spots of this to areas that I think would have naturally some variation in the skin. I also decided to go a little bit stronger on the highlight, so I went back with some Screaming Skull on some very few selected areas that would be super bright. And we're finally done! When you have a miniature like this with some well-defined muscle areas, it's gonna be a quite quick process once you start learning on where to place the highlights and how to use the volumes of the muscles. If you want to get some more contrast or smooth it out, just spend a little bit more time on these transitions and maybe add a bit more punch to the shadows, maybe using an airbrush after shading the miniature. As you've seen, there are not too many steps to painting the skin. It's quite a fast process and painting the skin well really adds a lot to the miniature. Usually you say that like the weapon, the face and the skin is what people look at the most. So if you can nail those things perfectly, you've got an amazing looking miniature. If you like this video and want more hobby tips and more hobby videos, hit the subscribe button, click the bell icon and you will be notified whenever there's a new video coming up. If you have any questions or maybe you have some ideas for new videos, write them in the comment section down below. And with that said, have a great day. Bye.